Hello, I'm Robert Emery, the founder of TED's List, and here today we're talking about fretted hands and guitars with the amazing guitarist Lewis Turner. Lewis has worked on many, many West End shows, including The Lion King, Mala Mia, Bad Out of Hell. He's also even worked with Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits. So here we are, Lewis Turner and his guitar. Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about fretting hand technique. So what I mean by that is how we position our fretting hand. I would say left hand, but obviously there'll be some um, right hand fretting technique as well if you're a left-handed player. So what we want to look at for playing contemporary guitar is these parts here, the metal parts of the frets. So when we press down on a note, we want to be as close to the outside fret as possible. So I'm playing the E string here at the fifth fret. So I want to be kind of closer to the sixth fret in order to get a nice crisp note. So we want this kind of sound. So you notice if I go too far behind that, I'm going to start to get some buzz in and slight out of tuneness. Yeah? So I want to be nice and close to the fret, not on it, because that is going to give us a dead note. So just there. And you can practice this quite easily just by going bunching up close to the fret with each finger. So each finger is you're reaching up as you play to get to that next close edge of the fret. Okay, so that's the most important thing. This is the biggest problem I see with a lot of people that are starting out is the, their left hand position, or I should say their fretting hand position. So you can pick as hard as you like all day long, but if you're not pressing down the note in the correct place in relation to the fret, it's never going to ring out and never going to get a nice crisp note with no buzzing. That's especially true on the lower bass strings. Okay, and this applies to electric or acoustic. So that's one of the first things to really make sure you're doing. Um, the other thing is your actual position of your hand. So we're talking more in terms of contemporary playing than playing an electric guitar here. So one of the biggest things with electric guitar is we need to keep any outside noise to a minimum. So if I'm playing one of the lower strings, here I'm playing the full string, or D, I'm pressing down, but you notice how my finger is kind of flat. So in old school ways, they used to teach you to play with your fingertips, which is quite a classical technique. Um, but for our more modern approach, like I said previously, we want to aim to keep the other strings quiet. So we want a slightly more flat fingered approach the, the pad of the finger, if you like, rather than the tip, in order that this finger then rests slightly over the treble strings in this case and keeps everything quiet. Yeah, and so once again, that applies to each finger. Little finger will be your weakest when you're starting out for most players. But again, you want to aim for that slight arch so it's covering the other strings to keep everything quiet. And what this also does when you're playing the, the treble strings, the top strings, is this gives the tip of the finger a chance to mute the string below that, so in this case the full string. So that keeps everything quiet as well. That's our biggest aim, especially if you want to get into playing with distortion, is to keep any outside noise uh, away, so we just have the, the notes that we're playing that can be heard. Okay, so just to recap, nice and near the fret, playing with a slightly more flat finger than you might previously have thought or read about for a guitar, uh, and we're muting any of the strings below with either the underside of that finger or the tip of that finger. Thumb position is also pretty important. So the thumb should follow the hand. So what I mean by that is as we're going up, so I mean up, the fretboard as the notes get higher. As we go up the fretboard, we don't want this kind of thing to happen where the thumb gets left behind and then you have to shift it. So your thumb has to move as your hand goes up. And a good rule of thumb, if you pardon the pun, is that we have it in roughly in line with your second finger. So it's kind of straight, yeah? So you see a lot of poor techniques, I hope you can catch this. So we're not, we're not doing this kind of thing, with the thumbs like that, or um, you know, like this. So we want to make sure it's always in contact with the fretboard, never away as well. So we have contact with the thumbs, so which it's pressing against it, so you've got something to press against there. And, and your thumb moves with your hand. Another top tip, 
is to try and aim for a gap between the, the palm of your hand and the neck of the guitar. So we're not bunched up like this, um, or any of those kind of things, so a little bit of a gap there. And your thumb, a lot of people worry about their thumb coming over. That doesn't matter, that's fine. It's good enough for Jimi Hendrix, it'll be good enough for the majority of players. So your thumb can come over the neck. Um, in fact, it's very important later on, once you get some more complicated chords, like slash chords, you're gonna need that thumb to play some of the bass notes, etc. So thumb coming over slightly also helps to keep down any noise from the low strings. So yeah, your thumb can come over, so we don't want it like this though. So the thumbprint part near the top of the neck. Um, and if, if this, all this is kind of okay to you and you're looking to, to move on a little bit further, well then the, the other things we look at for left-hand placement is particularly important when it comes to string bends and vibrato. So a bend, I'm talking about where we push the note up and vibrato is where we oscillate between a couple of pitches. So let me just talk very quickly about bends to those guys that are a little bit more intermediate and starting to play a few more techniques. So a string bend, we're not just relying on one finger to do it, it's the first thing that's super important to, to remember. So I really couldn't do it with just one finger. Maybe that's just me personally, but majority of players I see would struggle with just one finger, okay, to push the string up. So we're aiming to put, in this case, the other two fingers behind that third finger to really support it and squeeze the string upwards. I don't even need to play the note. You can just practice that kind of squeezing motion. And you also notice it's not an extension of the fingers. So I'm not doing this. I'm squeezing my hand up, like turning a, a key in a, in a door lock, that kind of motion. So it's from the wrist, the palm of my hand is coming up towards the neck and I'm squeezing it up towards the thumb. And vibrato is a very similar technique to that. You've just got to then oscillate it backwards and forwards or you can do it downwards towards the floor. A similar thing, but I'm using everything that's available to me to help in that situation, yeah? So I'm not just relying on the one finger. Obviously, if you're trying to do play a note that you want to do for brighter one with your first finger, then it's a slightly different matter. But for me personally, I would always then rely on a downward vibrato rather than up. Okay, so that's a slightly more intermediate technique there you could start getting into. Uh, so just finally, to recap all those points just quickly, so we had fingers close to the frets to get a nice clear note, playing with the pad of your finger rather than the tip, so you keep everything else quiet, uh, having a gap here between the palm of your hand and the, and the fretboard or the neck, and your thumb moves with your hand, yeah, your thumb print part near the top of the neck, and for the more advanced amongst us, starting to do string bends and vibrato, we're trying to use all the strength of our hand, not just one finger, to help squeeze that note up or add the vibrato, and you're squeezing the palm of your hand up towards your thumb. Okay, so that's the basics of fretting hand technique. I hope you found that useful. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe.